皆さん、おはこんばんにちは。And welcome to the Genki Lesson 19 Token Andy live stream right there. So, tonight we're going to be covering honorific verbs, respectful commands in Japanese, thank you for in Japanese, thank you for specific things, I'm glad I did something in Japanese, and I spec- expect that such and such a thing is the case in Japanese. But before we get started with that, let's go ahead and jump over to our、uh, obligatory. If you are finding this channel helpful and would like to help support the Tokini Andy channel and Tokini Yuki, it should just be Tokini Andy and Yuki at this point in time, we have a Patreon where we cover all of the textbook practice at the end of each and every lesson, all of the vocabulary in each and every lesson, and we make listening and shadowing videos that you can practice listening and speaking in Japanese along with us in those videos. We also have tests for all of Genki 1. And eventually, all of Genki 2 as well. And there's lots more to come when we move on to intermediate material. We also have merch, which will be available right below this video directly on YouTube. Eventually, maybe not right now, but in a couple days, probably. And we have Ko fi on YouTube. And even if you can't help support financially, that's perfectly okay. Just try your best to learn all you can. Ask any questions you might have down in the comments. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you hit the bell so that you know when these streams go live and all of that. Let's go ahead and jump into honorific verbs. So, honorific verbs in Japanese are for lifting up or exalting the person that you are speaking to. When you use these types of verbs, you don't use them for things that you're doing, activities that you're doing. You use them in reference to other people. So, we use them in reference to other people when you want to show respect to them. Now, the main thing that I want to get across in this lesson in particular is that you will probably never use this. Probably never use it.、Um, I really have never used it much. I worked at a restaurant once for a while and a bar, like on Saturdays after work, I'd go to practice speaking Japanese basically. That's why I worked there. I would work nights on Saturdays just to get some practice speaking Japanese. And I used it a little bit then. But unless you plan on working in a service job here in Japan, which is quite unlikely, you probably won't be using this. But you will hear it a lot. You'll hear it on the phone when people are talking to you. Like that, you don't know if you're calling a company or the bank to ask something. This is the kind of language they're going to be using towards you. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. If you go to a store or something, people may speak to you in this manner. But you will probably not be using this. Even within your own company, like the examples in the book or、uh, talking to the company president or whatnot, Japanese people need to learn this stuff if they work at a major company because they will maybe have to talk to their. Company president, like this. But in my experience in smaller companies or even in English speaking, con- like most of you are English speakers, if you're going to come to Japan, you're probably going to end up teaching English and you will never be expected to speak this way to anyone. In fact, there, it'll be a much more friendly one on one type of、uh, atmosphere, usually. In my experience, even in serious companies, when I'm speaking with the company president or whatever, which actually has happened quite a few times, it's just normal mas des for some reason.、Uh, they just, foreigners aren't expected to know this stuff, and even Japanese people have a hard time with it. Most Japanese people don't learn keigo, honorific verbs and forms, until they actually need it. And when Yuki and I were going through this lesson doing the textbook practice, there's a lot of, um, There's a lot of conversion exercises where you take verbs like right on screen right now, iku, and things like that, and turn them into the honorific. And those are easy, but when you take other verbs, like just other random verbs, like sing, and turn them into honorifics, which we're going to go over in a few minutes, people just don't do that normally. You just, you don't, it's like, it's never used, even by Japanese people, usually, except for in very strange circumstances, maybe like the one in the example in the book. But. Anyway, we, had a, we both had a hard time with it. Yuki even had a hard time trying to figure out what the correct answer was for some of the textbook practice exercises because Keigo is complicated, very complicated, even for Japanese people. So, my whole point is don't get too worried about this. Memorize these few things and try to get used to hearing it. And if you want to learn how to use it, that's perfectly fine. But if you struggle with it, 
it's not a big deal. This is one of the few sections in the book that you can sort of just be like, yeah, I'm going to push this one off for a while because you're just, you're just not going to need it anytime soon. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first things we're going to be covering are these two verbs, irasharu and meshiagaru. So irasharu is the honorific verb for iru, iku, and kuru. This iru is not the verb to need, it's the verb to exist. So to exist, to go, and to come in honorific Japanese is irasharu, irasharu. Meshiagaru is for taberu and nomu, both. Taberu and, and nomu are both meshiagaru. There's no differentiation between those two verbs. And there's no differentiation between these three verbs. It's very um, ambiguous. Irasharu. Some other common honorific verbs that were covered in this lesson in Genki are kudasaru. Kudasaru. This is the honorific version of Kuredu, which is to receive. This is where the verb, this is where kudasai comes from, actually. Kudasaru, to receive. Suru becomes nasaru. Nasaru. Neru, to sleep, becomes oyasumi ni naru. You're going to see this ni naru along with the, um, well, with suru verbs and with mas stems a lot, but that comes in a little bit. So, neru becomes oyasumi ni naru. This is actually where oyasumi nasai comes from. Oyasumi plus tsuru, nasaru. Oyasumi nasaru. The command form of that is oyasumi nasai. That's where that comes from. Miru becomes goran ni naru. Completely different. Goran ni naru. You're going to hear this one a lot. Uh, you becomes osharu. Osharu. And the te iru form becomes te irasharu. There's no trick to these at all. These are just things you're just, you're going to have to memorize them like vocabulary, basically. But get used to them. You'll hear them a lot if you're on the phone or on the train and things like that. Mm, and that's about it. In restaurants as well. So conjugating honorific verbs is a little bit weird. They don't usually conjugate as you would expect. So for example, irasharu, it's not an iru or an eru verb, so you'd expect it to conjugate as irasha. Dimas, if you're putting it into the mas form. By the way, irasharu is the dictionary form. It's not conjugated that way. It's conjugated as irasshaimas, irasshaimas. So you cut that and add imas, cut that and add imas, irasshaimas. You've heard irasshaimase before. Well, that's where that comes from. Taberu uh, nomu becomes meshiagaru, which becomes meshiagarimas. That conjugates exactly as you would expect it for the present tense, present tense polite form. There's a couple weird ones here. The pink ones are verbs that conjugate how you would not expect them, and the light green ones are just normal. So, kudasaru becomes kudasaimas. Once again, you would expect kudasadimas based on the uh, the mas, the godan verb rules, but because this is a special honorific verb, kudasaimas, you cut the ru and add imas. Nasaru becomes nasaimas. That's also an odd, odd one. Oyasumi ni naru is just, you just conjugate na naru. So, oyasumi ni narimas, goran ni naru becomes goran ni narimas. O osharu is also a weird one. It becomes oshaimas. Now, when I say weird one, fortunately, they're all pretty much the same. You're just cutting the ru and adding imas. So, that's nice in the, at least, right? Kudasaru becomes kudasa imas, just cutting the ru and adding imas. Osharu becomes oshaimas, cutting the ru and adding imas. Te irasharu is just taking irashai, irasharu. And adding it to the te form, so te irasshaimasu. Now, that's just a list of some standard honorific verbs. Um, I think there's probably more. I don't know any off the top of my head. But for any other verb that you want to make honorific, this is how you do it. For the te form, it's just te irasshaaru, as we went over a moment ago. And for any other verb, like utao, to sing, or what's another one? To listen, kiku, you just take o plus the mas stem, and add ni naru. So for example, for listen, kiku, you would take o kiki ni naru. O kiki ni naru. And that's it. But, yeah. They don't, it's not done a whole lot with just regular verbs. So, <clears throat> let's go over some example sentences. Goran ni narimasu ka? 
ご覧になりますか Will you watch? ご覧になりますか So you'll notice that here we're using the must form. So up until now, you've been taught that the dictionary form is informal Japanese and the must form is polite. But then you might be wondering why is the honorific form still just the must form? And that's because it's the words you're using that are the honorific form. It's the words as opposed to just the conjugations in this sense. So the honorific is so when you're exalting the person you're talking to, there's other ways of being polite and humble. Those are expressions we go over in lesson 20, I believe, in 21. But these ones are lifting the person up you're speaking to. You're using the mas form generally speaking, and it's the verbs you're using or the words you're using that are honorific. So, go ran. ni naru is the honorific. Go ran ni narimasu ka? Will you watch? And you're generally going to be using the mas form. Nani wo benkyo nasaimasu ka? So, suru. Suru verbs become nasaru. Benkyo nasaimasu ka? What will you study? O kiki ni natte imasu. They are listening. So, this is raising up the person who is listening. O kiki ni natte imasu. So, the person who is doing the listening is the person I'm raising up on a pedestal. O kiki ni natte irasharu. This is also something you could do. You could make it a double, a double humble expression. It's not really necessary, but you can do it. O kiki ni natte imasu is perfectly fine. But o kiki ni natte irasharu. Is also okay, but it's a double humble, a double honorific expression. I don't really know why. Genki doesn't really explain why. This is not my specialty. This is not Yuki's specialty. This is very, very few people's on the planet's specialty. You're gonna have a hard time figuring out why. Just know that these two things are fine. And you may hear both. Some more complicated examples are Kono ega wo goran ni narimasu ka? Just a longer version of the last one. Will you watch this movie? The reason I made this sentence is because I wanted to point out is that the other words in the sentence, like ega and stuff like that, they're, they're probably just going to say the same as they would in a normal sentence. The verb is where you're going to be getting your honorifics from most of the time, but not always. I'll show you some examples in a minute. Kono ega wo goran ni narimasu ka? Will you watch this movie? Tadaima. Right now, the company president is on the phone. So, tadaima. It's not honorific, but it's a very um, it's a very polite version of ima. Tadaima means right now, but you'll hear it a lot in like store announcements and stuff like that. Um, and it's a more polite version of ima. So, you're gonna see some more polite words, especially like adverbs and time expressions like this, showing up in honorific language. So, tadaima shacho ga denma ni dette irashaimasu. Right now, the company president is on the phone. Next sentence is Sono hon wo oyomi ni natta koto ga arimasu ka? So, here's koto ga arimasu ka, but with honorific expressions. Oyomi ni natta koto ga arimasu ka? Have you ever read that book before? So, this is something you might hear. Probably not, but you might hear someday. So, that's it. Probably not as satisfying as you were hoping for, but that's what I got for you on this one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. Hikoki ni noru mai ni nani ka meshi agarimasu ka? Sou da ne. Soko no hamburger wa dou ka na? Shachou wa vegetarian de irashai masen de shita ka? Ryoko no toki wa oniku wo taberu yo? Demo, tsuma ni wa naisho. Ara? Irashai mase menu wo goran ni narimasu ka? Let's go full speed, although that was kind of at full speed. Hikoki ni noru mai ni nani ka meshi agarimasu ka? Sou da ne. So, no hamburger wa dou ka na? Shachou wa vegetarian de irashai masen de shita ka? Ryoko no toki wa oniku o taberu yo? Demo, tsuma ni wa naisho. Ara? Irashai mase menu wo goran ni narimasu ka? Let's go with the English for that. Alright. Hikoki ni noru mai ni nani ka meshi agarimasu ka? So, Yuki, this is Yuki. And shacho. 
So Yuki's going to be using honorific expressions when she's talking about Shacho, and he's going to be using normal expressions because obviously he's the one being risen up. Or, yeah, right. <clears throat> so Yuki says, Would you like to go eat something before we get on the plane? Miss Yagari Maska could also be drink something, right? It's it's ambiguous, but we're gonna assume he mean she means eat right now. So hikoki ni noru mai ni before we get on the plane. Nanika something. Miss Yagari Maska, would you like to eat something or drink something before we get on the plane? So da ne soko no hamburger wa dou ka na? Hmm, I wonder how that hamburger joint is. Shacho wa vegetarian de irashaimasen deshita ka? You aren't a vegetarian, Shacho? I thought you were, is what is being implied here. Irashaimasen deshita ka? Vegetarian de irashaimasen deshita ka? It's like, weren't you a vegetarian? I thought you were existing as a vegetarian. Irashaimasen in this case. Ryoko no toki wa oniku wo taberu yo? Demo, tsuma ni wa naisho. Naisho is a fun word. It means secret or don't tell. Naisho. It's like a secret. Himitsu is also a secret, but in this case, it's it's like don't tell the person. Naisho. Ara! What? Oops. Irashaimase menu wo goran ni narimasu ka? Welcome! Irashaimase, you'll hear this when you go into any store. If you're walking around in the mall, people will be shouting it out from their different little store fronts. Irashaimase, welcome! Menu wo goran ni narimasu ka? Would you like to have a look at the menu? Goran ni naru. Would you like to have a look at the menu? Yeah, sure. All right, so question time. Lift up and exalt your pet, partner, friend, or imaginary friend by using an honorific to describe what they are doing. In my case, eiga wo goran ni natte irashaimasu. So I went double, double keigo there. De double honorific there. Our next section is respectful commands in Japanese. And they're not, res they're not referred at to as respectful commands in the lesson. They're referred to as, I believe, giving advice, respectful advice. But in reality, this kind of language is more of a command. And Genki does point this out, it's just not in the title. But it's more like a command and it's telling you to do something for your own good. Like, if, if you don't do this, you're gonna regret it. It's kind of what it implies. But... So you, you should think of it like a command. You're going to hear this quite a bit like on trains and train stations when people are giving instructions. Um, but it, it it's respectful. And it sounds like they're saying please, but it's a forceful please, but respectfully. So let's see how we do it. So for regular old verbs, just anything that's not included in the honorific verbs above and not a pseudo verb, so not like ryori suru, benkyo suru, not like that, just regular old verbs, you're going to take o, which is the honorific, the v ma stem, so the ma stem of a verb, and kudasai. So for example, o kiki kudasai, that's please listen, o kiki kudasai, kikimasu, so the verb stem is kiki, masu, you don't need the masu, it's just a stem. O kiki kudasai. Okay, the O is the honorific uh, prefix, I guess is what you would call it. For pseudoverbs, you're going to take go. Go benkyo. I've never heard that before. Go benkyo kudasai. Chigao yo ne. Chigaimasu. For most pseudoverbs, like ah, go dan kudasai and stuff like that. Honorific verbs with ni naru, like um, I believe oyasumi ni naru. Oyasumi kudasai and things like that. We'll go over some examples in a minute. But so for the uh, the nouns up above, goran, go chui, chui suru. There's not all sudo verbs take this go noun kudasai. There's just a few and they're covered in the book. But like go chui kudasai is a very common one. Goran kudasai, things like that. So not all sudo verbs, just the ones that are mentioned here. Omachi kudasai. Please wait. You're going to hear this one a lot. Omachi kudasai. Omachi kudasai. Go chui kudasai. Please be careful. You're going to hear this one all the time. You're going to see it on walls all over the place. When there's a slippery floor or a door that doesn't open or a space between the opening door on the train and the, tr you know, the, uh, the platform. Go chui kudasai. Please be careful. But it's like a command, right? And this is wait. Please wait, but it's wait. 
o kiki kudasai, please listen. I said that one earlier. Goran kudasai, please watch. Some more lengthy examples with these words. Tadaima ando ga denwa ni dete iru no de omachi kudasai. Right now, ando is on the phone, so please wait. Tadaima ando ga denwa ni dete iru no de omachi kudasai. We didn't put ando san because when you're lifting the people you're talking to up, you're not going to be lifting the person in your company or your friend up as well by putting honorifics on their name. So, tadaima ando ga denwa ni dete iru no de omachi kudasai. The reason that we didn't use san for ando san there is because. In the situation I imagine there, Ando san is my friend or my business partner or something. And the person I'm speaking to, obviously, I'm exalting because, you know, you don't exalt people in your, in your own company, generally speaking, when you're speaking to people outside the company, especially. So when you're speaking to people outside of your company and you're talking about people within your company, you don't refer to the people within your company using honorifics. San, sama, those are honorifics. They, um, yeah, they raise up the person you're speaking about. So you don't use them. You just use the name. So, ando san becomes ando. So that's why you don't use san, because we have to keep the people within, within our plane down below the person we're speaking about or speaking to. Please wait. So, this is also honorifics we're, we're talking about here, guys. So, these are things you're probably not going to be using anytime soon, but you will hear and see them on signs a lot. So, learn to recognize them. This is the one you're going to hear getting off the train if there's a space between the door and the platform. Or if there's a step or something like that. This means please watch your step. Literally, it means be careful of your feet. Basically. Be careful of your feet. But we just colored it as uh, please watch your step. O kiki kudasai. Please listen to our new song. Ware ware is our, our, or we, or thing, you know, something like that. Very, um, sort of archaic, but very polite and still quite common, actually, especially when using honorifics. Ware ware no shinkyoku wo o kiki kudasai. Please listen to our new song. Dialogue. Not going over too much on this because literally it's just learn to recognize. Waiter. <笑>こちらへおかけください。じゃあ、シカバーガー。シカバーガー2つください。お飲み物も召し上がりますか?コーヒー2つちょうだい。コーヒーは熱いのでご注意ください。申し訳ありませんが、シカバーガーはあと1つになってしまいました。どうなさいますか？フォースピード。こちらへおかけください。じゃあシカバーガー。シカバーガー2つください。お飲み物も召し上がりますか？コーヒー2つちょうだい。コ
is very popular in Japan right now. It's been popular for the past couple of years now, at least up here in the north. Um, yeah, deer meat has become quite popular in the past few years. It's been sort of a fancy thing. There's deer deer meat restaurants. Um, one of my favorite burger restaurants has Shikabaga, and it's very very good. So I figured you should learn that word. It's not in the book. It's not in the um, book. I don't believe, but it's just shika is deer. In English, we differentiate the word deer, the animal, from the meat type, which is venison. But in Japanese, it's just shika. Shika baga futatsu kudasai. Two venison burgers, please. Onomimono mo meshiagarimasu ka? Would you also like anything to drink? Now you'll notice here I put an o before nomimono. Now with some words, uh, when you're speaking in honorific language, you will put honorific la, uh, characters before certain nouns. One of them would be nomimono, onomimono, go home. I believe nomimono, so I believe Japanese words, uh, native, quote, Japanese words take o, and words that come from other countries, generally speaking China or something like that, take go. I believe that's the correct situation. So, by the way, the character for both of those is this right here. Go, or, well, in this case, it's o banana. So it's o and go. This is actually the whole character, but the last part of it is a banana. And this is merch. It's available in the merch store. There's a link down in the description. Onomimono mo meshiagarimasu ka? Would you also like anything to drink? Kohi futatsu chodai. Two coffees, please. Chodai is a very casual, informal version of kudasai. You'll hear it a lot. Um, among family and friends and stuff. And a shacho talking to a waiter. That's definitely not unusual. The coffee is hot, so please be careful. So you don't have to be careful, but it's for your own good. Be careful. Command. This is like the super polite version of sumimasen. The literal translation is um, kind of, I, I don't have any excuse. But think of it as like, I'm very, very sorry, but... Shikabaga This is doshimasuka becomes donasaimasuka. So I'm so sorry, but there's only one venison burger remaining. Ato hitotsu ni natte shimaimashita. So this person is regretful that there's only one left. We're using shimao, te shimao, natte shimaimashita. And we're still using honorific, so do surun janakute. どうなさいますか? What would you like to do? Question time. Command us, Yuki and I, to do something. Respectfully. 新曲をお聞きください. Let's jump into saying thank you for specific things. Every section from here on out in this lesson is much more straightforward. It's just a very simple single point grammar point that you can use right away and that will actually be useful to you in day-to-day -day life. And this is one of them. This is how to say thank you for specific things in Japanese. So, for regular verbs, and when you're talking to friends or family or just regular people, all you need to do to say thank you for a specific thing is to take the te form of the verb and add kurete arigato. Gozaimashita is optional. This lesson in Genki teaches just kurete arigato, but it's... Technically, arigato gozaimasu. You technically do need the whole thing. You can drop gozaimasu if it is friends. You can say, ano, tsukutte kurete arigato. Thank you for making it. But you can also say, tsukutte kurete arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for making it. And the only other thing that they point out in this lesson is gozaimashita, which is, um, kurete arigato gozaimashita, which means that the thing that they did for you is finished. But if it's still an ongoing thing, or if you're still in the process of experiencing whatever it is that, that they did for you, you would use gozaimasu. So I'll go into some examples with that. Don't worry about it too much, but we'll get into it. For honorific verbs, since we did go over honorifics today, you would take the te form, kudasatte arigato gozaimashita, or arigato gozaimasu, depending on whether the thing is ongoing, or if it's a finished thing that they did for you. So, tsukutte kudasatte Arigato gozaimashita. So you're talking to someone raising them up. Kudasaru. Remember that is the, it's the kudasaru is the honorific version of kureru, 
which is to receive from someone. So, kudasatte arigato gozaimashita. Some examples. Oh, I used tsukutte. Who would have known? Tsukutte kurete arigato. So, I'm going to go over the different levels here. Tsukutte kurete, kurete arigato. Thanks for making it. Tsukutte kudasatte arigato gozaimashita. Thank you so much for making it. And it's finished. Maybe I've already eaten whatever it is. Tsukutte kudasatte arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much for making it, but maybe they're still making it. So maybe, yeah, a person is making something for me. Maybe they're making, a, I don't know, instructions on how to do a certain thing at the, who knows, doesn't matter. And they're still making it. And I want to thank them for making it while they're making it. Then we're going to use gozaimasu. I just wanted, to, the only reason I'm making a deal out of this is because Genki only actually um, mentions gozaimashita, but you can use gozaimasu. And that's when... The thing is still going on, generally speaking. Either one would be perfectly well understood, and I wouldn't really consider it a mistake if you used one in the quote wrong situation. Either one is fine. Some more complicated sentences. We have party ni yonde kurete arigato. Thanks for inviting me to the party. Nenga jo wo okutte kudasatte arigato gozaimashita. Thank you so much for sending me a New Year's card. Now, in the States, I don't know about Europe and whatnot, but we send out Christmas cards, right? Uh, not everyone, but a lot of people send out Christmas cards. And in Japan, everyone sends out Nengajo, which are New Year's cards. And it's basically a postcard. I don't know if we have any in the room. But it's basically just a postcard. And it's maybe got a picture of the family on the back or a short little message. And you send it to everyone you know, basically. And if you get one back... Or if you get one in the mail and you didn't send one out to them for New Year's, you actually have to send one after the fact. So, like, if we, say, got 10 Nenga Joe from a bunch of different people that we hadn't... We didn't send out any this year, frankly. <laughs> and because uh, we, we just... We've been reclusive and haven't really hung out with anyone the entire year. So, mostly because of working on all this. But, <laughs> so if we got 10 Nenga Joe, we would have to send 10 back. Despite it being New Year's is finished, we get them on New Year's Day, send them back out. So we were actually at Yuki's parents' house for New Year's this year, and they got at, I believe it was 7 or 8 in the morning. 7, seven or 8 in the morning, I think, yeah. The postal office drove up on their little motorcycles with a stack of postcards this thick. That's how many uh, postcards they received. So they have to go through every single one of them, make sure they had already sent some to those people, and if they haven't, they have to send one back. And those are called Nengajo. Whoa. Thank you so much for sending me a New Year's card. Excuse me, so you remember this is very similar to te sumimasen deshita. Remember when we were apologizing for specific things? Well, it's the same idea here, but we're doing it with thanking for specific things. So it's te Sumimasen deshita, sorry for a specific thing, versus te arigato gozaimashita, or arigato gozaimasu. Well, when we did the te sumimasen deshita, I mentioned how when you're really sorry, you can add honto ni. You can do the same thing when you're really thankful. So, te tsudatte kudasatte honto ni arigato gozaimasu. It should go right there, between the te and the arigato gozaimasu. Honto ni arigato gozaimasu, or honto ni arigato gozaimashita. Itsumo te tsudatte kudasatte. Thank you so much for always helping me. Listeners helping is pointed out by itsumo. So itsumo means they're, they help me all the time. They're probably going to help me in the future. So instead of gozaimashita, which would imply that they're never going to help me again, we're using gozaimasu. Dialogue time. Slowly one time. Then at full speed, then we'll go over the English. Then I'll answer any questions you might have, and you get to answer my question. So desu ka? Dewa. チーズバーガーにします。大丈夫だよ。私はベジバーガーにします。あら？シカバーガーを譲ってくださってありがとうございます。いいよ。この店にしてくれてありがとう。しまった。飛行機に乗り遅れてしまいます。乗り遅れて
飛行機に乗り遅れてしまいます。Let's go with the English. そうですか。Oh, really? では、Well then, チーズバーガーにします。I'll have a cheeseburger. Remember, the Shika burgers, there's only one left, and we ordered two. 大丈夫だよ。It's okay, you don't have to. 私はベジバーガーにします。I'll have the veggie burger. It's supposed to be a vegetarian anyway. あら Huh? This is a little bit later. So, this is a new verb. This doesn't show up in Genki at all, I don't believe, but it, I find it very useful, I, especially when you're hiking. シカバーガーを譲ってくださってありがとうございます。So, thank you so much for letting me have the venison burger. 譲る。This can also mean to let someone else go ahead. So, that's why I first learned this. I first learned this hiking. People were getting up on my tail. And I figured I should let them go. So I asked the person I was with, I said, How do I say that? And they taught me, Yuzuru. Yuzutte ageru. Let them pass. Yuzutte kudasatte arigato gozaimashita. So thank you for letting me have the venison burger. It literally translates to, Thank you for passing on the veg- venison burger for me. The kudasatte implies the for me. Thank you for passing it up for me. Yuzuru. いいよ。この店にしてく,だくれてありがとう。It's okay. Thanks for choosing this restaurant. I think he chose it. しまった。Oh no! 飛行機に乗り遅れてしまいます。We're gonna miss the plane! 乗り遅れる。Gonna miss it. Question time. Say thank you to someone in chat or to us for anything. It can be silly. 来てくれてありがとう。Thank you for coming. 来てくれてありがとう。Don't worry, there's two more sections. All right, so that brings us on to the next section, which is not that bad. It's how to say I'm glad I did something in Japanese. It's quite easy if you know the te form. All it is is I'm glad I did. Te form plus よかったです。So よかったです。The past form of e, which is good. So it literally means it's good that I did such and such a thing. So te form. よかったです。I'm glad I did. Whatever the tape form verb is. You can also say that you're glad you did not do things by saying, taking the negative、uh, verb stem. So, for example, taberu, the negative verb stem is tabe, tabe, and then you add nai, right? So you take the stem, tabe, and add nakute yokata. So, tabe nakute yokata, or hanasu, the verb, the negative stem is. Hanasa, so you go up to the a column, right? Hanasa nai. So, hanasa, that's the stem. Nakute yokata des. Hanasa nakute yokata des. So, here's your sentence. Tabete yokata. I'm so glad I ate. Tabe nakute yokata. I'm so glad I didn't eat. Itte yokata des. I'm glad I went, or I'm happy I went. Literally, it's good that I went. I'm glad that I didn't go. Some more complicated sentences. I think it's great, or I'm glad that I didn't drink much last year. I didn't drink much alcohol last year, and I'm very, very happy about that. I think it's true. I'm glad I Skyped with my family over the New Year's holidays. Nenmatsu is the beginning of the year, I guess. So the end of the year? Beginning of the year? Yeah. New Year's holidays, the end of the year. ね So we talked to them before. Nenmatsu ni kazoku to Skype shite yokatta desu. So just like in English, Skype is a verb. In Japanese, it's a suru verb. Skype suru. Tonan Asia ni itte honto ni yokatta. I'm truly glad I went to Southeast Asia. Oops, I forgot to color truly.、Uh, just like in the last section, you can throw honto ni between te and yokatta. Just like you can between te and sumimasen deshita and te and arigato gozaimasu. And it has the same type of meaning. I'm really, really glad or I'm truly happy. Tonan Asia ni itte honto ni yokatta. So, the des is of course optional. It makes it a little bit, little bit more polite to have the des. I'm truly glad I went to Southeast Asia. So, dialogue, I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed, then I'll go over the English and I'll get to your questions and make you answer mine. Here we go. Maniat 
てよかったですね。そうだね。ベジバーガー食べれ食べれてよかった。えへ、シカバーガーも美味しかったです。席はこちらだそうです。はーい。おお、荷物を入れてくれてありがとう。フォースピー。間に合ってよかったですね。そうだね。ベジバーガー食べれてよかった。へえ、シカバーガーも美味しかったです。席,席はこちらだそうです。はーい。おお、荷物を入れてくれてありがとう。Go with English. 間に合ってよかったです。間に合う means to be on time or to make it on time. 間に合ってよかった。I'm glad we made it. It's good that we arrived in time, isn't it? So, だね for sure. Veggie burger, 食べれてよかった I'm glad I ate that veggie burger. 食べれて so it's the potential. I was able to. I'm glad I was able to eat the veggie burger, would be the little, literal translation of this. Veggie burger, 食べれてよかった I'm glad that I was able to eat the veggie burger. Eh, shika burger, mo, o i s h k a t a des. Yeah, the venison burger was good too. Seki wa k o c h i r a da so des. It seems our seats are here. こちら is over here. はーい。OK. お、あ、荷物を入れてくれてありがとう。Thanks for putting my bags in the overhead is implied here because we're on a plane. 荷物を入れてくれてありがとう。So that's from the last section. Question time. Tell me about something you are happy you had the chance to do at any time in your life. For me, 東南アジアに行ってよかった。I'm glad I went to Southeast Asia. All right. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and jump on to I expected or I expect that such and such is true. Or something is, I suppose that this is true. I expect that this is true. There's a few different ways it goes over in Genki. But the one that I find is the most accurate in my experience is I expect that something something is true in Japanese, which is hazu. Hazu. So I expect that something is true. You take the short form of a verb or any adjective or an adjective or a noun and add hazu this, which means I expect that this thing is true. With verbs, you just take the short form. Past tense is fine, present tense. Hazu this. E adjectives, just like they are. So no mama, hazu this. For na adjectives, you add na hazu this. So kire na hazu this. Uh, for nouns, no hazu des. So, ando no hazu des. I believe it's ando. Or something like that. You could also say, I believe that something something is true would be another good way to say it as opposed to expect. So, some example sentences to see what this means a little bit better is, doa wo shimeta hazu des. I'm pretty sure I closed the door. So, this is how you would um you would express something like that. So, maybe I. Expect that such and such is true is sort of hard to get a grasp on why you would want to use something like that.、Uh, in English, we don't really say, I expect that I close the door is true. We don't say that. But a more natural English for that would be, I'm pretty sure I closed the door. And not like, oh crap, did I close it? I'm pretty sure I did. Not like that. Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm almost positive, 99% positive. There's this small chance that I didn't, but I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive I closed the door. The door. ドアを閉めたはずです。So we got the short form past tense of 閉めた。Next sentence is an e adjective. We have おいしいはずだ。So the this is optional. It could also be だ short form. Any of that is fine. はずだ。I expect it tastes good. パリはきれいなはずです。I believe Paris is supposed to be beautiful. So this is the supposed to be. You don't use this はずと be like I'm supposed to do something. That's when you're going to use things like.、Uh, Beki or nakereba ikemasen and stuff like that. This is, I suppose this to be true. Just want to point that out really quickly. Sort of a weird explanation there. But, pari wa kire na hazu des. I'm pretty sure that Paris is tr- beautiful. Ando san wa nihon jin no hazu des. You know, I'm almost positive that Ando san is Japanese. Ando san wa nihon jin no hazu da. Yo. Some more complicated sentences. Hitori shika. I believe only one person can go in. Implied here is at a time. Shika only plus negative. 
Shika hairenai means only one person or one person, yeah, only one person can go in. Hairenai hazu desu. So once again, short form negative. You can also use negatives to say you expect that something is not the case. In this case, can not go in. But short form. Omoshiroi hazu datta kedo. So janakatta ne. I was sure it was or would be good, but that wasn't the case, was it? Omoshiroi hazu datta. I was positive, almost positive it was going to be good. That's why we have the past tense here. But, so janakatta. That was not the case. Tomodachi ga nomimono wo motte kuru hazu deshita ga motte konakatta. Doushiyo. I expected that my friend would bring drinks, but they didn't. Doushiyo. What should I do? Let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. Uh, I'll go over it slowly once, then at full speed, and then I'll go over it in English. I'll get to your questions, and you can answer mine. お昼出るっけえっ、ー、と一時間後にあるはずです。あ、よかった。お肉があるかな。シカか野菜が選べるみたいです。シカ二つで。申し訳ありませんが。シカはあと一つになってしまいました。どうなさいますか ?Full speed。お昼出るっけえっ、ー、と、1時間後にあるはずです。あ、よかった。お肉があるかなシカか野菜が選べるみたいです。シカ2つで。申し訳ありませんが、シカはあと一つになってしまいました。どうなさいますか Let's go over the English. お昼出るっけ I forget. Is there lunch? So this small tsu plus け means that I forgot. I forget. I knew it at one time, but I forget. Now, so can you please,、um, can you please explain this to me? I actually did a whole video on this little、uh, grammar point. Sort of,、um, sort of slangy, but I did a whole video on it. It's called Forgetfulness, I believe. It's, it's got my face like this on the screen. So if you want to learn more about it, there's a video somewhere on my channel.、Uh, I believe it's in the short grammar lessons playlist. So, Ohiru deruke means I forget. Is there lunch on this plane? Ke. So you just put ke after the short form of just about anything. So, tabetake. Did I eat? St- something like that, right? えー、と、一時間後にあるはずです。Um, I believe it's in one hour, or I expect that it's true that it's in one hour. I'm pretty sure. あ、よかった。お肉があるかなあ、good. I wonder if there's meat with a singing sound. シカか野菜が選べるみたいです。It appears that you can choose 選べる。Venison or vegetables. This is a fancy plane, but it is the president of a company, so I guess that could be true. He's happy. Shika, futatsu de. We'll have two venisons. Moshuake arimasen ga, Shika wa ato hitotsu ni natte shimaimashita. Dou nasaimasu ka? I'm sorry, but there's only one venison. Ah,、oh, not a burger. It's not a burger. There's only one venison remaining. What would you like to do? You'll remember this sentence showed up earlier. Shacho doesn't get any venison left today. He's going to give it to Yuki again. Hopefully, Yuki will give it to him. The question for this section is What is something you believe is true about next week? Daishu Yuki ga furu hazu desu. I believe that it will snow next week. Thumbs up wo kogeki shite kudasai. Please smash the thumbs up button and channel toroku onegai shimasu. And please subscribe and hit the bell. If you haven't already, so that you know when these streams go live. Arigato gozaimas. Otskare sama de shita. Mata tsugi no video de aimasho ne. Nihongo benkyo stai no ka? Ore to onaji fu ni nihongo o shebele ryo ni nari tai no ka? Kono hon motte ryo no ka? Then we're here to help. Eh? So na no? Ore wa muri te yo to motta. On the Tokini Andy Patreon, we have listening and shadowing practice. Genki vocabulary practice. Genki textbook practice where Yuki, Ando, and I are your partners. 
Eventually, even work by practice. So, no, no, Kyurio did it. Uh, yeah, sure. After Genki 1, we'll be covering Genki 2, and eventually, even intermediate textbooks. Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese QAs will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon, live right now. Yoroshiku ne. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu.